Hey, you fans, you're watching The Extra Point, brought to you by Public Coffee and presented by UteFans.net, the original home for Ute fans. Please check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, or Apple Music, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Guess what song I was listening to in the shower this morning? We don't want to know. Viva <laughs> Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. We need so, to edit that uh, out post I, I, I'm in a pretty good mood. No. I think Cal's in a pretty good mood. I think Jordan's in a pretty good mood. I think everyone's in a pretty I'm good mood. I'm definitely in a good uh, mood. Christmas came early this year. Look, this weekend was a delightful delectation of smorgasbord football flavors for the common fan. Not even just the Pac-12 fan. Yeah. Anybody watching Pac-12 football this week would have loved all of the flavors that were on display in our conference today. Mm. Flavors only rivaled by the numerous flavors available there on the is. menu here at Public Eds. There it is. There, there it, it is. is. Yeah. But you got you start early. You look at Cal's throwback ugly uniforms. I didn't think anybody could ever compete with Oregon for an uglier uniform. Then Berkeley throws out their retro uniforms. Okay, check that box off. Oregon doesn't own that crown. You go, you look at the UCLA game. Surprising. Yeah. It's surprising to watch yeah. that pan out the way it did. Mm -hmm. Everybody watched the Civil War with Oregon State, the Beavers, whooping on Oregon. And I have to say, I find it very humorous that they won that game down by 20 and did not throw the throw ball. Did not throw the ball after Run seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. I mean, talk about just cramming it down the yeah. duck's throat and showing them who deserves the Civil War Cup even more. That was awesome yes. to watch. It, And then, of course, the Colorado game. Yeah. We go into Colorado. I always said it's a sleeper game. It's a tough one. We usually fall asleep. Traditionally, don't take it for real. We come out. Again, one of our uh, tight ends wants to be a world-class hurdler. We've got a new star mm. premier running back in yep. the backfield. We've got Cam Rising back uh back making the throws and the reads that he needs to. Defense is clicking. Mm. It was an exciting weekend for football, especially being a U fan. Lest we forget the midnight Pac-12 after dark Apple Cup. That uh, we yep. were all up watching. Yes. Oh my goodness! What more could you ask for? It Especially was, uh, as a Ute fan. It was what great. What more could you ask? I was for? I was watching the uh, Oregon State game and they were down. I think they went down ten to thirty four. I think was yeah. it was. And, and I thought, okay, well, I guess we're, we're looking at the Holiday Bowl or whatever it was. And uh, I watched. I turned around with some friends later and I'm like, wait, it's thirty eight thirty four, and then we won. That's what I said. It's like yeah. we. I was like, we won. Like they're my <laughs> team. And like I was a Bruins uh. fan. And I was a Beavers fan, all, you know, of all these different teams, and a Utes fan at the same time. But obviously, a very exciting uh, weekend for college football, and we're off to the the Pac-12 championship, baby. Yeah. So back in the show, yeah, back in the Oregon show. Tried back to, in the I mean, show. I talked about to Oregon tried to give the game away to us two weeks ago, yeah, and mm -hmm. they did the same thing. Just Oregon State made the plays down the stretch. But there wasn't a lot of parody. Football. No, yeah. like you yeah. know, I, they they don't I, for whatever reason, whether it's Bo Nix being banged up, they like they just I don't know, don't know how to finish a game, really, like. Well, it was very interesting. Even against us, like the running back slid short of the first down. There, you know, I'll like ask, I'll ask all the Oregon fans that commented on our yeah, check our, our YouTube post, comments. Yeah, on our YouTube post, it, can they finish a game? I Al mean, Connor still it, like can they finish a game? It, to me, Oregon came across as front runners this year. They like the glitz and the glamour. Um, I put SC in the same boat, but SC is more willing to back it up. Mm -hmm. And then add insult to injury, their uh, their coordinator bolts for the yeah. ASU job right after the game too. Yep. So you know, Oregon's in disarray, and they were primed for the picking, yeah. and the Beavers whooped that behind. <laughs> Thankfully, it was awesome to watch, and I find it very ironic that they were oh for whatever on fourth down, and Bo Nix is will was the deciding factor or his bum will was the deciding factor yeah yeah well i think um looking at, we're, we're going to preview sc a little bit later but we got a big matchup in vegas and we've already taken sc down once so it'll be very exciting to see what happens there but well, i'm curious you know i think it's worth talking about some potential scenarios now what do you think jordan i mean like yeah there's a lot there's a lot there i think uh the one that's interesting is is uh if SC does win Friday night and go, I would imagine they go to the playoff. It's not guaranteed that Utah will go to the Rose Bowl, um, which is a little odd. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who they would pick. The bottom line, though, is is just win Friday night and you get and you get to go back to Pasadena. And I think really it's a culmination of what we've been talking about on the show for weeks about mm -hmm. not 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 giving up. Um, not throwing it in, mm -hmm. managing your emotions, manage your expectations, believe in the system, and just trust the process. You know, it's it's a uh, the ball bounces funky ways. You know, you look at the thirty-four to ten. I'm sitting at home and 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 telling Britt, uh, you know, all it takes in a rivalry game is kind of one wacky play. Yep. 
and you're right back in it. Sure enough, they run the football, score a touchdown, three and out for the Ducks. They drop the punt. Now all of a sudden it's a 10 point. I'm like, I'm like, hey, that, that's all it takes for the ball to bounce a couple funky ways. And the Utes are going back to back to Vegas. Um, they did a nice job. I, I don't want to take away from the Colorado game. Um, they did a really nice job putting them away early. There's a lot of things that could go wrong in a game like that. It's senior night for Colorado at home, their mm -hmm. last game. Not a lot of emotion, not a lot of fans there. It's a bring your own energy game. And, um, you know, to put up, what was 35 0 at half or four? I mean, it was, yeah, they. Yep. They did what they needed to do um, and exactly what they were supposed to do and in a fashion that looked good. Um, Jaquindon Jackson has really emerged as of late, had another great game. Cam put the ball where it needed to be. The pig farmer can run. He can run. <laughs> He's yeah. got, he can He's run. That was fun to He's watch. Got wheels. Yeah, that sure. was fun to watch yesterday. He's a track star. Yes, he know, was. A track star. So, and, uh, hey, all roads lead to Vegas. The roads to the Pac 12 championship still go through Salt Lake. Mm hmm. We've been saying it. I love it playing out the way that it did last year where all they had to do was worry about where their feet were and take care of the next task. Right. And you had the haters, you had the naysayers, you had the people in our comments, whatever, over the last couple of weeks that are like, oh, the season's done, pack it in. Mm -hmm. But for the second year in a row, we had a team believe in themselves, take care of business one play at a time. And even though adversity was staring them straight in the face after the first loss, after the second loss, yep. they end up being exactly right. where they need to be. And there's a lot of people out there saying, well, this was a luck. There was a laundry list of things that needed to happen for them to make Friday's game. But I will say this, as it was written on one of the posters I had hanging on my wall throughout my childhood, good luck is the residue of hard hard work mm -hmm. and there are very few programs in our conference let alone the country that put in the work like the University of Utah running Utes and the good luck is shining on their behalf today because of all of the hard work that the program has put into over the past two years and beyond yep. we are right back where we need to be we deserve to be there and yes we were watching other games on bated breath and chewing our fingernails and whatnot but just like the task of tackling all of the plates spread out on the Thanksgiving table. The program believed in themselves. They unhitched their belt. They got to work. They got it done. Yeah. Absolutely. They got it done. Yeah. And it was an absolute joy to watch as a fan, as a former player. And I'm excited for the opportunity to go against the front-running Heisman Trophy candidate yep. on Friday night. And Caleb Williams is the real deal. Yep. It will be exciting to see exactly how our defense changes the game plan to try to corral him. But this is the fourth game that we have had against a very mobile, scary quarterback. Yep. You look at Florida. You look at UCLA, you look at Oregon, you look at USC the first time, now we get another chance to play, yep. and I have a feeling the defense has a couple tricks up their sleeve in order for this type of an offense. Right. I think, too, lest we forget the week, you know, Tavion Thomas decides he's going to, you know, get ready for the NFL, who's coming back, who isn't. We talked about it in the show last week, who's even going to play in this game against next, Colorado. Next man up. All, the, all those things, you know, worrying about what other teams are doing could have derailed the Colorado game mm -hmm. very easily. So kudos to the program, to Coach Whip for getting everybody focused and, uh, again, taking care of business and, and getting a lot of guys on the field, a lot of meaningful reps. Um, but, yeah, big one Friday. Yeah. Huge one. Big one. Big, big. Hey, uh, Kevin, put the camera on me really quick. All you Ducks fans talking trash in the YouTube comments, how about that? How about that wink? So – Anyway, just thought what the duck? I, th I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd throw, throw some love out to my, my favorite Ducks fans. You know who you are on social media. You know who you are. But what I'd also like to say is uh, it's been really fun. <clears throat> this is our last regular season podcast of this season. Looks like we've got a couple more coming yeah. down the pike, so you guys stay tuned for that. But uh, I'd like to thank Cal and Jordan for participating and doing an excellent job. It's been like the time of my life doing this podcast with you guys this season. This season. And also uh, thanks to our, our, our viewers, yep. our listeners. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported this podcast, the, the athletes, the staff, the University of Utah. It's been a heck of a time. So uh, we're hoping that uh, we have a good podcast next week. Um, but uh, stay tuned for our next segment. Hey, Ute fans, Cal Beck here once again, reminding you that when you are looking for the best coffee, mint limeade, or a burger with onion IPA jam, then you'll have to look no further than the famous and popular Public Coffee House in the shadow of President's Circle, where their in-house concoctions and food never disappoint rookies or veterans alike. <laughs>
Go Utes. Hey, you fans, welcome back. And we're joined by Mr. Gabe Reed, a defensive lineman from the Utah Utes squad. Congrats Jesus. on the win yesterday. Thank you, thank and, you. And uh, congrats on somehow making it to Vegas this Friday. That's a, that's a big deal. How are you feeling yeah. about that, Gabe? I'm stoked, man. It's my last year of college football, and we're going to the conference championship, so I can't complain. And uh, big game yesterday against Colorado. What, what's your yeah, takeaway yeah. from that game? Um, H- highlight real game. Yeah, we, we took care of business is the bottom line. I mean, we, we won the game, and, uh, yeah, happy to move on to next week. So before I open up for questions here from uh, Cal and Jordan, um, you're a transfer to the yes, University sir. of Utah. Your brother, Kareen, uh, is a defensive player. He's a tr- uh, sophomore, true yep, sophomore. Yep. Uh, and you started your career, actually you played three years at Stanford University. Uh, what I'm wondering is what, what prompted your decision to make the switch to Utah? Being from here, actually, yeah. being from uh, Spanish Fork. American, American Fork. Fork, gosh, yeah. I knew I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think there was a number of things that, that came into play when I made my decision. Uh, first and foremost, I was done at Stanford. Like, I had graduated with a uh, couple degrees and felt like, you know, I got what I went for. And, Two uh, degrees, to yeah. be exact. Yeah. Don't be modest. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Two degrees from so, Stanford. From Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes I feel like people make a bigger deal out of it than it is. But um, So there's that. And then, you know, obviously I'm from Utah, and uh, I felt like – had one more year of eligibility, and uh, my brother's here, so I thought it would be it would be fun to come home and um, and play on a competitive team, and and you know given the results of last night, I think that that kind of panned out with us going to the championship this week. And so. you've you've got some uh, major influences in your family. Is it on your yeah. mother's side? Is it your mother's brothers or is uh, it your my father? dad's? Your dad's yeah. brothers. Four yeah. of them played football, played yeah. college football and NFL. Uh-huh. So, so my dad and my uh, my uncle Gabe, who I'm named after, both played in the league, uh, and then I have three uncles who played at BYU, and then uh, oh man, some other uncles, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> one that played at Southern, yeah. when yep. you've got uncles that played pretty yeah. much all it, in on Utah, 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 Utah State, yeah. yeah, yep. So football, uh, we're a football family for sure. Yeah, you were definitely a yeah, football say I, Yeah, to yeah. put it lightly, that's <laughs> like the definition. Family. Yeah, yeah. And it, what a special opportunity for you to have the ability to play alongside your brother yeah. Um, yeah. coming up. Him being an outside linebacker, you being at the end. You guys have, I don't know if you know this, but you are combined for 14 tackles for lost, which is the highest in most P5 teams, the Power 5 conferences for those at home. They are the top brother tandem in P5 <laughs> college football for tackles for loss. How often do you find yourself getting on your brother to pick up the slack? <laughs> uh, not <laughs> much. Probably ever. Probably that stat is ever, I bet. Yeah. I bet you guys have the That's, that's, that's probably, probably the No, that's cool. That's, that's yeah. probably a record. That's fun, man. I mean, that's a huge part of why I decided to come to Utah. Like, the experiences that we've had and the, the memories that we had on the field, like, I know we'll look back and cherish them for, for years to come. So it's been such a, an amazing experience. I can't even begin to describe. If there was ever a step up from the camaraderie that we talk about every single no week kidding. at Utah and Utah football, it's yeah. the, the, the true bro- the brotherhood. Actual brotherhood. <laughs> like, that's the only way to yeah, top that yeah. camaraderie as well. Uh, your uh, – are you the are you the fastest runner in your family? I'm not. I, I'll, I'll come out flat and be honest. I'm not the fastest. You're gonna give the My nod to your wife. My mother's always been. What's that? You're gonna give the nod to your wife. Um, maybe I'll give the nod <laughs> on record. Off record, it might be a different answer. Just because, uh, yeah, I might get in trouble if I give a different answer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, at what distance do, do you become the better runner in the house? <sighs> That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to. Uh, do some tests and then <laughs> because you you mentioned going from outside linebacker uh to the end you get yeah. you like how utah defense is defensive minded you like to get after the quarterback yeah. more yep. that was one appealing thing to you changing positions you obviously get to pursue those quarterbacks out of the pocket and yeah. make those tackles for loss yeah. who was more intricate on your running form to chase down these qbs was it the utah coaches or did your wife have a little uh, we do our background on this show, so, so you're getting yeah, 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 you're right. Here, I wasn't yeah. expecting this question. I'll be honest. It is everybody. Uh, I think it was a it was a team effort. Um, <laughs> sometimes when I get in trouble for my wife, I have to run away from her at the house. So <laughs> that that played a big role too. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> uh, Jordan, questions for Gabe? No, I mean I, I don't I don't have a whole lot other than just obviously you came here for this reason. Yeah. You know, talk about what that pro- 
Talk about, I mean, for people at home, obviously, the transfer portal is still so new. Mm-hmm. And, and yours is a little unique, but because um, you have family here, what, what was the process like? Like, actually walk us through from, like, day one, you go tell the coaches at Stanford, hey, I'm going to enter the transfer portal, and then what happens? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the exit process at Stanford, and I'm sure it's similar to other schools and programs, but you meet with the head coach, mm-hmm. and you, you tell him uh, he, he wants to see where you're at in yeah. terms of um, – what you're thinking for for next steps and uh kind of came to a mutual decision like yeah. I, I think i'm gonna move on and, mm-hmm. and part ways with the program and uh so yeah i talked to him about putting my name in the portal mm-hmm. uh initially my my gut feeling was like i'm gonna come home to utah uh-huh. that, that's what i was thinking and uh i put my name in the portal and started you know receiving uh phone it's calls like, and like recruiting all over again yeah it's right it's, like, it's a lot man mm-hmm. and, and uh i had heard uh, from different schools yeah. uh, across the country, and it was kind of fun. Uh-huh. Uh, but at the same time, like me being an older guy, I was kind of like, I just want to, you know, cut to the chase and yeah. figure out where I'm going. Um, but yeah, I heard from uh, a bunch of schools. I ended up taking a visit to to University of Hawaii. Okay. Um, was was a good good time. Uh, <laughs> the coaches are really cool. Uh, but when they came and said, "Hey, we'll fly you out, you and your wife out to Hawaii." I'd, Said, all right, yeah, for that's sure. New. They didn't do that when I was on the staff. So, <laughs> so uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah, there. that's really cool. Yeah, I, I got a, I got a couple of questions. I just gotta ask. Yeah. I mean, you know, playing at Stanford under a coach like uh, David Shaw, he's mm-hmm. great, great mind, great football mind, great yeah. coach. Obviously, Stanford's fallen in some rough times more recently, as you know, yeah. uh, better than we do. But, um, you know. The thing that's interesting about Stanford is, is at least since we've been in the Pac-12, since Utah has been in the Pac-12, we've been compared a lot to Stanford in terms of yep. being very similar. And the same with Oregon State. We have we have a similar defensive mindset and everything. And, yep. and Stanford's put some, fielded some great defenses, you know, uh, mm-hmm. since I've been watching them. But what's interesting is, you know, Kyle Whittingham, he's, he's no longer obviously the defensive coordinator at the University of Utah, but technically he kind of is. I mean, like, what, I, I'm curious what it's like to make that transition from Coach Shaw to Whittingham playing under Scali. For, uh, under a you know a coaching staff that really values defense and you know arguably you know Kyle Whittingham has one of the best defensive minds in college football. I mean it's it's hard to debate that. So I'm curious what your experience has been like being a defensive player under Coach Whittingham. Yeah, it's been uh, great. I think refreshing for me to to transition from a school that I felt like um, had more of an offensive minded with Coach Shaw being an offensive guy and. Uh, Coming to Utah, where things are more defensive-minded. And in high school, I uh, played for Coach Witt's brother, right. so I, I kind of used to that. Mm-hmm. Kind of used to that coaching style, and uh, it, it's been great. I've, I've loved it. So, right on, yeah. You had the opportunity to play for Coach Shaw, who is a, yeah. known as a phenomenal coach yeah. uh, across the country, not just in Pac-12. Yeah. He announces uh, his retirement, <clears throat> stepping away from the team. Yes, sir. Uh, you were you were lucky enough to play for both Coach Whittingham for Coach Witt. Uh, two wits to be at that. Yeah. And I actually coached against you when I coached at Alta when you were at Timpview. Oh, okay. So we're a beast then. You're still <laughs> a beast now. Uh, do you see many similarities between Sean and Witt in the big locker room pitcher? Um, definitely, definitely. I think they're both great uh, coaches. They're both great men and uh, mentors of, of men. And they, they emphasize, uh, you know, being a great person on and off the field. And I think that uh, is definitely a... Uh, a crossover between the two of them. And um, I think they have different coaching styles for sure. Uh, but, yeah, with them being both great, great uh, mentors, I think there's definitely carry over there. What, what's, what's the process like, again, for people listening and watching at home, to get into Stanford? All right, everybody talks about, like, <coughs> oh, you can – the recruiting's a little different because you got to get into school. Yeah. Walk it, us through that a little bit. It's uh, – it's Is it all, the, is it all that – I mean, it's all that it's said to be, essentially. Uh, in my yeah. experience, yeah. yeah. I mean, so uh, as you're getting recruited, they're saying, hey, like, we just talked to admissions. Like, uh-huh. you need to be in this AP class and this AP class. And uh, I don't know. I never had an issue with GPA, but, like, sure. I think your GPA has to be at a, at a certain um, uh, score or whatever. Yeah. And then you're taking the ACT and you are in constant contact with the coaches. Like, okay, this is what I got on my ACT. Then they go to uh, talk to admissions and say, okay, this is – good enough or you're gonna have to take it again yeah um yeah and it, it's it's a uh, it's a constant communication between you and the coaches about uh um, wild yeah but but yeah 
So it's a hyper academic focus. Oh my focus gosh! Stanford. Is it? Yeah. Stanford, yeah. Stanford is continually the only school that outperforms us academically with yeah. student athletes in the Pac-12, mm -hmm. and that goes without any shame. Yeah, uh, they've always been an academic focused yeah, I mean, institution, and that's the way it is. And, and it sounds just like the same admittance and ex recruiting process for the academies, yeah. Air Force and Army, is you have to have those core classes done in a specific SAT score and GPA. Right. So they are constantly in communication to make sure that not only can you do it academic or athletically, but academically you are willing to do yeah. what's necessary to stay eligible because yeah. they do put yeah. student before the athlete, right. just like we do here at the U. Doesn't does he say tough, smart guys, too? Shaw? Yeah. That's his thing, oh, yeah, too, that's, huh? Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a, a wit and Shawism sure. right there. Tough, smart guys. That's what they want in the program. Yeah. Did, when you made the position change to putting your hand in the dirt, did you feel the pressure of beefing up at all and putting on some extra weight? Um, Not necessarily. I think it happened naturally, and after talking with the coaches, like, hey, you're going to be uh, playing with your hand in the ground more than you did at Stanford. Uh, it kind of happened. So I put on – uh, maybe eight pounds or so, um, but yeah, at Stanford in, in their in their defense, three four outside linebacker, there were definitely a good amount of plays where I had my hands in the dirt anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Real, real real quick here, talk about now. <clears throat> it's always hard to beat a team twice. Yeah, really difficult. Um, thoughts going into SC. Obviously, they looked pretty good last night. How do you guys? try and stop Caleb Williams from running around and making a bunch of plays. I think we kind of saw some of that in the second half when they were out here in Rice Eccles a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, what do you do with a guy like that, you know, going into the week? First off, I mean, uh, I think, you know, he's a great player and we've seen that and he's going to make plays. Yeah. So so the, the goal is to limit his, his big plays. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to my brother last night on the drive home. And uh, I think for me, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Like, I feel like our defense has grown so much in the past – a month or however long it's been since yeah. we played yeah, that. Absolutely, like, yep. we're a different, a different group of guys, yeah. and uh, I'm excited to show and, and prove that that we are, and this is going to be a quality uh, yeah. test for us. So, awesome. yeah. but, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, and and I know the guys on our our defense are too. Like, yeah. this is like the perfect shot to mm -hmm. to show who we are, and um, yeah, it's going to be fun. And, and you, this Utah team showed it last year. I mean. They played Oregon twice yep. and, and handed no it to them twice. So no doubt, definitely have the capability to do that. And uh, looking forward to, to showing everybody that we can. Oh. Man. Last question here for me, anyway. Um, what do you what do you notice about what what do you think is unique about the culture here, um, as far as Utah football is concerned? And you have some experience with other yeah. programs. Yeah. So I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. I think uh, my experience has been that uh, it's uh, it's truly a family culture like mm -hmm. and I think everybody strives to to cultivate that kind of culture and people talk about having that kind of culture but I really feel like uh it's a, it's a family culture in the locker room um this might be something small but the fact that I'm married um and there's a lot of other married guys and and coaches know that and and choose to embrace that yeah. like I back at Stanford there's like a handful of us uh married guys there's some LDS guys and mm -hmm. It's, I mean, they're, they're inclusive, but, like, it's not, like, a part of who we are as a program. Like, everybody comes from different walks of, uh, of life and different backgrounds, but um, I feel like they do a good job of, like, integrating everybody together. Like, there's uh, activities. Like, the wives have activities with coaches' wives, and um, coaches have us over all the time for, for meals. And uh, so I really feel like it's a, it's, it's a family uh, environment. So he must be looking at all the other players' notes. Say, every player, yeah. every week really echoes that, that yeah. response. Has said that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uncanny. It's it really to is. <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's we talk real about bit, it. Yeah. We, yeah. we talk about it. It's real. It's been well, like the, that for decades. Well, yeah. Both of these guys played long before you, mm -hmm. and it was the same with them. I still talk know? to dudes I played with. Cal, I'm sure, you still talk to dudes that if you they, played with. They had kids. They were married, yep. and it was run of the mill. It was. It wasn't anything out. I. What's your favorite home cooked meal? My favorite home cooked meal. I'm a simple guy, man. I I love a uh, good beef soup. My mom makes a good beef soup with lots of vegetables and a bowl of rice and soup on top of it. That's sounds great. That's me, man. Weather sounds awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. Totally, it's totally. Great. Well, I let me take the opportunity to thank you for all of your efforts and investment into the program, your education into coming back and finishing a brilliant college career uh, here you. up at the Hill. Um, 
we love watching you do what you do. Um, but I'm not willing to say that this is the end because you probably have the biggest game in your career coming up on a short week on Friday. Yep. But looking back, what is your number one moment so far as a youth? <sighs> number one moment so far. That's tough, man. I think um, Red Zone Friday. Jeez. <laughs> it used to be called something else. Um, I think, man. So I, I think the, the USC game, like, that was a big yeah, uh, was moment for us. Yeah. Like, just uh, winning that game, having the, the fans storm the field. Yeah. Um, that moment with my brother. And if I could pick one thing that wasn't, like, one specific moment, like, just the time that I've had with my brother and the, cool. yep. the memories. Yeah, so man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for everything yep. you've done for the program. Yep. Uh, your family you. is proud. Mm -hmm. We're proud of you. Thank you for being a Ute. And go get it this week. Yep. Yeah. That's the plan. Dream. Uh, yep. uh, it's all come down to the vision that you guys have maintained and held on to. Uh, so. When all the other doubters wanted to stop believing mm -hmm. in the vision, in we the plan. We talked about it. We talked we about, talked about it. it all this year. Like, Y'all just, you guys were where your yep. feet are. Yep. You handled one day at a time. Yep. And residue is good luck is the residue of hard work and some people might think that this matchup is lucky on our part this friday but you guys earned it totally. you guys have earned it yep. far beyond just what happened last week yep. so go out with this opportunity we know you'll make us proud yep. and have a good one thank yeah. you. have a good one yep. thank, you. Hey, thank you gabe for coming on and i'll just throw one other thing out there uh, jordan win had this great idea the show is called the extra point uh, we're going to throw gabe reed the extra point blessing right um, so, so we're, 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 night. we're yeah, You're about to have a big night. Here. Every week we've done it. Yeah, the players have done well. The extra point is, is, this thing is a real thing. Um, real. So we'll be, we'll be looking for you to take Caleb Williams down that backfield. Yep. Okay. But uh, Thank thanks for coming on, sir. And good luck next week. And we'll be right back. Thank you. All right, welcome back to the show. Um, we've got former Poinsettia Bowl MVP Jordan Wynn biting into one of Public Ed's fabulous breakfast burritos. Jordan, what do you think of it? Man, that is really good. I would highly recommend you stop by this week and get the breakfast burrito. Fantastic. And that breakfast burrito comes with egg, cheese, avocado, salsa, bacon or sausage, and yep. their famous tots. And, so good. And, Cal, how is that burger? I hate to disappoint you, Jordan, but you uh, got cheated on this. Too. <laughs> the burger is fantabulous. It's so good I have to make up words. I asked like, yet last week where the beef is. It's in my hand and in my digestive tract at this point. Yep. You and, will not be disappointed. And that's a killer burger. I've had it myself. Uh, lettuce, tomato, uh, IPA jam, which really makes it. <laughs> um, cheese and a special sauce. So come by Public Ed's and try their food. It's amazing. And, and don't forget about their coffee. Welcome back, you fans, to The Extra Point. I'm joined here by Mr. Freedom Bowl MVP, Cal Beck and Mr. Poinsettia Bowl MVP, Jordan Wynn. And we've got Michael Henry, super fan. Shasta. Other, otherwise known as Shasta. Shout out everybody's many, identity many on the show. You, many of you know him. <laughs> uh, before we jump into uh, Jordan's favorite segment of all time, Stump the Utes, we're going to preview the SC game coming up this week in Vegas on Friday. And let's see what's going to happen, Jordan. <laughs> there's, there's a, there, it's, it's a tough matchup, right? I think um, Rice Eccles played a factor in the first, first go around. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the atmosphere was incredible, unlike anything I've ever seen there, really, and it showed down the stretch. They're back healthy. I think Addison kind of got nicked up when they came to Rice Eccles the first time and missed some plays. Um, they look good. They're a good football team. I would argue actually the back playing now Jones is better than Die. Which is which is hard to say because Travis Dye is a great back. I think East. I think Jones is a bigger bigger back and actually complements their style a little bit better now. <clears throat> it's the premier matchup uh, everybody wanted to see. Honestly, I mean I don't think um, anybody really, other than maybe Duck fans, wanted it any other way. Um, sorry, Duck fans. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, have fun in El Paso. But. Uh, <laughs> Look, it's going to come down to we talked about it. Like, can they contain the quarterback? This is their fifth yep. chance of the year. Again, another another chance, another opportunity to put it on tape. Can they contain the quarterback? I think offensively, you don't have Tavion, um, but you still have a stable of backs that can run the football. What's Kincaid's injury look like? 
from mm-hmm. yesterday. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions going in, but again, <clears throat> like Gabe mentioned, it's a different defense than it was when they came to Rice Eccles. That's mm-hmm. that's that's gelling. Um, I don't you know I'm just excited for them to see what happens. I think SC is you know they got their eye on the playoff. What an opportunity for us to spoil it for them again, um, and just go handle business. You know I know the game plan will be solid. I know that. I know Coach Wood will have them ready to play. I know the guys will be ready to play. Let's do it. There's no easy road to the championship, and the championship still goes through us. Yes. Uh, and we will be ready, regardless of who is still on roster or who not, who's thinking about future career plans or whatever. We knew we would be in this spot. The players believed in it, and here we are. The proof is in the pudding. It's going to be an exciting game. It's a different defense on both sides of the ball at this point in the year. It's a different backfield at both sides of the ball this or both sides of the ball this time of the year, and it's going to be exciting. There's a reason why the game is played. Neutral site. Uh, we'll come into it. We travel well to Vegas. Uh, so does SC. It's not that far. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a short week of preparation. But there's one thing I will always tip the hat in favor of Coach Whittingham and his staff when it comes to coaching preparation. Yep. And yeah. it's just it's again it's like the first matchup. It's such a clash in like everything, the workmanlike approach of Utah versus the Hollywood flash of LA, uh, the NIL transfer portal free agency team of SC versus a, a, a group at Utah that develops and stays here and, and grows as a unit. It's a new coach versus the most tenured coach. Well, and it's almost a storybook uh, culmination for a defense that's been struggling to find their identity. Yeah. And here is the Heisman front runner Correct. at this point of the what year. A, yeah. And their game plan is going to be dependent yep. upon what they can sta- what they can wrap him up into not allowing yeah. him to do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. there's a lot of things to still prove. We've yeah. got a lot of people that are cracking into the roster and getting some plays. Uh, we've got some tight ends, I'm sure, that are hungry to hurdle even yeah. more players. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of exciting things that come down on the field on Friday. S- same as last time, man. Pack your lunch. Bring your hard hat. It's another epic battle Friday night. You fans will see you down there. SC is not invincible. No, we 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 we've, no, we've, we've, we've proven we proved that, that over the we've past decade. That. Yeah, and I, I can't as we're talking about this, I can't help but think about all, all the love to some of my SC friends. Notice the operative word was some. Yeah. Um, but but um, <laughs> to any his yeah, you know but the, gracious the, of you. <laughs> yeah, I, I know right. But the, the thing is, is uh, I, was talk, I, I interviewed one of them who, who works for a fan site in, in LA, and it's a big fan site for for SC, and they're they're very successful and. And it just was interesting, just like every other SC fan I talked to, this was prior to our last matchup with them, and he was just gushing about, oh, Caleb Williams and Jordan Addison. And I just think, you know, and SC is doing the right thing with NIL and all this stuff. And and that's expected. I grew up in Los Angeles. I'm used to that kind of talk, you know. Um, And I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, you better be ready. You know, you're you're not invincible. Yeah. We've proven that. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to go to this game with a lot of confidence. SC is rolling right now. They had a big win against Notre Dame yesterday. Yeah. Um, but so far, we've yeah. this season we've got their number. You know? They're going to be motivated, right? They lost first go around, and it's always hard to beat a team twice. Utah's done it just last year, beat Oregon twice. But yeah. it is difficult to beat a team twice. They're going to come in with with oh. even the extra little bit of motivation. So, uh, but again, it's I love this matchup because it's the classic LA. Flash, front runner, at the beach. It's cool to be a Trojan fan again versus Ute Nation. Um, you know, what more can you want? And th- what I will say, what I will add, is kudos to the Pac-12 for changing the conference championship alignment and it not being north versus south. And yeah, just absolutely. The two best record teams, no matter how it shook out with the tiebreakers and everything, um, it's a, it creates this game that's incredible. Right. I'm holding out judgment. And I get what you're saying. And I, I thought about it a lot this weekend, but I think the only time will tell if it truly is a greater thing because uh, if things play out the way that they can, we're looking at a Rose Bowl that really holds no clout yeah. or other big six New Year's Eve bowls that are all for naught. Uh, but that's that's yeah. that's way down the road. Yeah. Uh, but I do appreciate the matchup that is possible uh, yeah. this year. Sure. Uh, granted, it would have mm-hmm. never happened right. Right. with the South versus the South team. Yeah. I get it. It's, it's going to be remarkable. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to wait to uh, <laughs> ring the bells of victory Ooh. on that move for, for just a couple more years. Yeah. Last thing on this, this quick segment, um, a lot of SC fans, a lot of people on the Pac-12 are saying, Utah-USC is not a rivalry. 
You cannot tell me. No, it definitely is. You cannot tell me it's it's not a rivalry. This has definitely been a rivalry since the since Jordan, the beginning. Yeah, Jordan, trust me. I was Jordan, in it. I was in the first one. Jordan it's a rivalry. In the first game uh, uh, in the Coliseum. I was there. I watched him play. Uh, it's a rivalry. Game. No, it is. And it's one of the best rivalries in the Pac-12. Yep. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to disagree with you again on this. It has to be a rivalry defined by both sides of the ball. USC does not see us as a rival. Regardless how many times we beat them, we cannot self-designate themselves as a rival. I mean, when I was in high school, I played for a team that – Never won. We were everybody's homecoming game because it was a guaranteed win against us. But did that make everybody else our rival? Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, Fair point. it sure. is what it Fair is. Point. You, you, Cal, you can't honestly tell me that Colorado's our rival. We know who our rival is. We know who our rival yeah, is. They're playing and they irre- got lucky last they're night. They're playing irrelevant football in November. And I'll leave it at that. They got lucky. That's enough said. Ir- irrelevancy looks really good on BYU, I just got to say. Yeah. But uh, moving on. We, we, uh, but they'll be okay in the Big 12. Yeah, sorry, probably. sorry guys. Hey, um, you don't have nothing nice. Little, to say. little, little, little bit of trash talk on the. I have nothing to say. Morning. Nothing nice to say at all. Um, I'm feeling that's, that's, froggy. That we do that well, but uh, Shasta, um, uh, Jordan, what time is it? Every not I've, it's, apparently it's my no, favorite no, no, time, no. <laughs> but no, it's not my favorite time. Stump the Schwab, no, stump the. I don't know. Stump me? Everybody yeah. stumps me. Well, Stump Andy Brown, super fan. We're, we're, we're good at stumping Jordan here. But uh, Shasta, what you got yeah. for us? What you got for good. us today? First question for you. Utah has played in 24 bowl games. What is Utah's record oh, in those 24 <laughs> bowl games? Oh, I know it's a lot it's to a little. It's a lot to a little. It's but it stings recently. Yeah. Oh. With, 24? Got, I'll yeah. say 14? Yeah, I'll say 16 and 8. I was no. going to say 16 and 8, 17 and 7. 16 and plus 17 8. 17 and 7. 7. Wow. 7. Oh. 17 and because 7. Because I was there at the Drew Bledsoe <laughs> massacre at the Copper Bowl. I was there when SC beat us in 93. I, th- those are the ones that I remember. And then That's, Northwestern, I was obviously. just going to say Holiday Bowl a couple years ago right. was a rough one. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. That was a bad Good one. Good question. Yeah, yeah. the great uh, question. Yeah. You, you didn't get Cal Beck, though. Yep. yep. Do we got Cal? <laughs> Second one. Utah's first bowl game was the Sun Bowl in the 30s. Then they played the Liberty Bowl in 1964 that had the distinction of being the first indoor bowl. football game. Indoor football Can't game. Can't stop Cal. He, he was you on me on that one. Stop Cal. He was on me on that one. I could, I could <laughs> tell just by the look on For your face. For those of you listening at home, he didn't even finish the sentence. I do exactly no. what he was Death. About. Taxes and not being able to stump Cal Beck, the only things guaranteed in this life. Yeah, this, uh, why are Jordan and I even here? Yeah. You know? like, uh, Last question. Defensive coordinator Morgan Scally is known for playing rugby at Highland High for Coach Larry Gelwix. Cool for Gordon. What famously horrible boss played Larry Gelwix in the movie Forever Strong? Oh. 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 Shout out to the Wilson coaches too, Larry and Jeff. That's they were a great yeah. Rugby you're staff. Uh, you're gonna have to kind of, you know, think about this. Maybe I'm out. I'm out already. I'm just taking myself out. He played time. himself, didn't he? No, Gary Cole, who played Bill Lumberg in the movie Office Space. Wow. Oh. Okay, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> yes. I, do, yes. I know something. Or, yes. or, or in this CBS case, reports. we're gonna need you to come in on yeah. Sunday morning. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. What is it? The Bob's? I got a Bob's. I got a meeting with the Bob's. Yes. yes. Bob's. Ooh, good questions. I, Great good questions. questions. Excellent question, Shasta. And I just have to mention really quickly. Uh, Shasta is a huge fixture in Utah athletics up here as a fan. He's one of the biggest super fans that I know of. I've, I've I've known about you most of my life. Um, First fan I ever met. He's he's, yeah. he's, in a, he's one of the original yep. UteFans.net message board posters. Um, mm-hmm. And and I just thought I'd mention really quick. Yeah, Jordan, you have a quick story about. Yeah, no, I was on my unof- unofficial here, and for the spring game, visit? unofficial visit, spring game, two thousand eight. I was I was undecided, and uh, Shasta and his family were the first first Ute fans I met. They were kind enough to invite uh, myself, my dad, and and my brother to. Have some some birthday cake. Some birthday cake. Yeah, uh, that was uh 2008, so 14, almost 15 years ago yep. now. But crazy. Also, was kind enough to have myself. I think Luke Matthews, Devonte Christopher over for dinner. Uh, it was silver and silver. Talk sil- about yep. the difference. No, it wasn't Devonte. D. Chris didn't come over. Yeah, Luke and just silver. The three of you. Talk Luke about a silver. difference in the NCAA now. Do you remember the hoops we had to go oh. through with? Who, mm. Yeah. Who's gonna be there? What food was being served? Yeah. Who? Who what? was paying for oh it? Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah, the hoops. Now it's like, you know, yeah. 
And the one thing that saved the Wild us, West now. The one thing that saved us on that dinner was I was working with the gentleman that was the director of football operations before Jeff. That explained to me, if you have a lineman, treat him like five people. <laughs> if you have a running back, a quarterback, in planning food. Right. Uh, if you have a running back, quarterback, uh, skill position, that's three people. That makes sense. Yeah. He said, if you have a punter, that's just one person. So, <laughs> <laughs> With a decent hand. I, yeah. Oh yeah. Sh shout God. out to Hank Mondaka, Utah's I, most famous I, punter. I, I just have to emphasize, like, we have athletes on. Obviously, we had Gabe Reed on today, and he was just tremendous. And we, I have nothing but respect for the athletes yeah. that show up and, and just show a lot of class. Yeah. Uh, and, and insight on our podcast and also having these great fans on yeah. who are who really make the difference in my opinion and we want to tell the story of the student athlete that's a big part of our vision and our message but at the same time we want to represent the fans and so it's really great to have you on and I just have to ask Shasta uh, so far as, as a youth fan your most memorable memory <laughs> oh, if you that. could pick one if you could, <coughs> pick, if you could pick one memory one that really really was that shattering one, for you that one's an easy one uh huh 39 hours nonstop on a bus from Salt Lake City to New bus. Orleans. You're in the health Sugar Bowl? For the Sugar Bowl. Oh, my gosh. 39 hours there. And, wow. oh, the stories. We actually had a radio station in Chicago, Illinois, that was watching Ute fans because we would text stories of what was happening on the bus <laughs> back to Ute fans. Oh. They would post them, and this radio station in Chicago was reading them, so they were following us the entire <laughs> wow. way. Wow. Wow. Um, that could be a, that could be a whole segment. Yeah. To oh, be honest. I'm sure. That could be a whole show oh, if sure. you ever want. Probably a couple of shows. Yeah. That's a what? Netflix documentary yeah, waiting totally. to happen. What? A thir totally. thirty for thirty. Yeah, what, what there kind you of go. bus was it? Uh, it was a double decker bus. It was the first trip that they took in this. Um, there were seventy of us on board. Um, and yeah, it had. Let's see. We almost didn't make it out of Monticello because we were overweight. Um, Monticello, like Colorado? Monticello, Utah. Or oh, Utah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you yeah. were not far. That's, no, we, we didn't. San we had, not made, yeah. we had yeah. not made it far. We left one person behind <laughs> when we finally did get the permit oh, to, you know, to go. Gosh. And luckily, a, I think it was a farmer or something like that found him and was speeding down the highway in this old truck to catch the bus. Holy cow. Um, we got lost in Dallas. Um there's some other stuff yeah. that probably is off just, air, but it yeah, ends. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll off tell air you stories. when the camera turns off. off air stories. <laughs> uh, let's see. They didn't have the hose for the uh, holding tank. Wow. Yeah. So that caused some problems in Albuquerque. Albuquerque, we're sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I'm not. You're not allowed. You're not allowed back in it's, Albuquerque. It either. sounds like it should be the basis for a screenplay for a comedy or yeah. something. You know, starring it, John Lovitz. Yeah. 39 oh. hours. 39 hours. That's, that's well, hey. Well, that's fandom. I, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, that's Utah football. That's a yeah. real fan. Yeah. yeah, we actually got a shout-out from Carissa Thompson during the Sugar Bowl. That's right, you did. Mm -hmm. That's right, I remember that. Wow. Well, that's – Not to top that, yeah. but I was watching that game. I, I had committed, and we got a cake. So Sam Brenner, mm -hmm. uh, t Sherry, if you're listening, they ordered a cake, and it was supposed to say, Go Utes. But it said "Go Youths," <laughs> <laughs> like uh, like like Joe Pesci. Mm -hmm. These yeah. youths, these youths, youths. Yeah, go youths. Hey, here's What's one more for you. Dad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. here's a, here's one more for you. The judge in that was played by Fred Gwynn, who was more famous as. Oh, wow. oh you got us, Shasta. Yeah, you got to just tell yeah, us. Yeah. There are benefits to being old. <laughs> Fred Gwynn was Herman Munster. Oh, oh wow! Oh wow! wow. <laughs> Well, this is what the show could be yeah. in the off season. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. There's Star Wars no kidding. and old old stories, profanity. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, Shasta, pleasure. Thank you. Good very to have much. you on, Shasta. This is a Appreciate very it. memorable Appreciate podcast. You. Hey, you fans! Thanks for checking out our podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get Check down us to out. Vegas. Oh no, no, hold oh. on. There's oh, we got a couple things. Cal, mentioning. Cal's yeah, got we something. Cannot let the fans go without mentioning that men's basketball is now five and two. Yeah, and yes. they continually are getting better. Did yep. you want to add? No, that? no, go ahead. And I was good. And the lady running youths, the women's basketball rolling. team, rolling, rolling. They are now ranked number seventeen. They won the Bahamas Pink Flamingo Tournament, defeating Alabama in the championship game. They
They are still undefeated, ranked number 17 Incredible. in the country. Volleyball is rolling as well as right. they wrap up their season. So a lot of good things happening on the campus for a lot of youths. Absolutely. And finally, I have to say it is with our heavy hearts and condolences that the UteFans.net family expresses our condolences and uh, the loss for Jason Potter. Jason Potter played uh, safety for Utah in 99 after a brief stint at Murray High School and at Snow College. He walked on as a safety. He won the earning spot, earning a scholarship. He started in 1999. Uh, my heart and condolences from mm -hmm. all of us go out to the Potter family. He will be deeply missed, and he was a running Ute through and through. Thanks for that, Cal. And you fans, check us out next week after the Pac-12 championship game. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on iHeartRadio, Apple Music, or Spotify. And go Utes. Go Utes. Go Utes. Go Utes. See you in Vegas. Take it. Okay. You got some layups for us? Don't throw us any hard questions today now. Uh, oh, maybe. Boy. Here we go. Yeah, we, yeah we, we might have to go old school on one of them. Here we go. All right. All right. We're, 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 we got you. We got you. Okay.